Precious Father, holy and blessed forever. We thank you, Father God, for your presence with us tonight, your promises that are exceeding great. We pray, oh, Father God, now to come the only provided way, and that's by your precious blood. We walk the way, Father God, that and walk it in obedience. You'll honor that uh, and be among us with the signs and the wonders. We thank you for that, gracious God. Uh, hallelujah. Even as uh, testimony is given tonight of your healing and gracious power. Father, God, for with God nothing should be impossible, and those that are in Christ are with you in agreement. Father, God, uh, in your holy and blessed name, and now we pray to be totally yielded to thee, fully yielded. Oh, God, uh, get himself out of the way, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, knowing the, that the Savior must reign supreme in our hearts, lives, and minds. Father, God, now, and that by the right word of the Lord, help us in it. Every promise and every facet of its power. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory now. In the name of our Creator and our Christ and our King. In the name of the glorious and the almighty, the infinite. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank God. Enjoy the selection of the testimony. Well, we've been on the revelation of the seals. And some work on uh, preaching, exhorting at least, uh, we trust on uh, the first seal. So we move on, God will, to the second seal and a few things here. All right, in, I'm going to entitle this Until Jesus Comes, with the uh, main thing being the second seal, Until Jesus Comes. What happens when a seal is open? Who opens the seal? Well, we know only the Lamb of God, Revelation 6, 1, can open the seals, Christ himself. When a seal opens, a religious war, great disturbance in the religious sphere takes place. Religious war takes place. Then a rider goes out and he rides who's on the, on the horse, the color of the horse. That symbol means a lot. We have to discern. The first horse was white. White is a color of righteousness, but in the case of the rider here, since it's known uh, by the revelation given on to his servants the prophets, the rider was the Antichrist, so the white horse and its power stands for fake, false righteousness. For the devil himself and his emissaries are transformed into angels or messengers of light. But it's not Christ on the white horse in Revelation 6. It's the Antichrist spirit. He's a spirit because he has no name. And he has a bow, but it's the early age. And the strength and the wisdom of the original apostles uh, are with him, and they're on the word, so he can only bluff. Therefore, he has a bow but no arrows. But when the next seal is opened by the Lamb, he has a sword, a great sword. The great is interesting because you see Nimrod was a mighty hunter against the Lord. Uh, Mystery Babylon the great, a great sword. It's against the saints of God. Uh, uh, the symbol reveals the color of red or blood. And when we go from the bluff and gain a sword, then anyone in disagreement with the Antichrist spirit can be put to death literal death by the sword, which church history attests to that very thing. And further revelation uh, as the parallel runs between the first and second seal and the first and the second church age. But let's take a look at it, Revelation 6, and we'll note uh, verse 3 and 4 in this second seal. Say, so, well, it's kind of short, but we know God, uh, just in a very few words, can put much power to what we need to know. And he does it by uh, the Scripture. All right. And when he, the Lamb, had opened uh, the second seal, I heard that the second beast. Now, the second beast, find those in Revelation 4, and they are... Uh, living creatures, uh, John sees them. The second beast is like an ox or calf, which stands for something. As you remember, the first beast was like a lion. Part of the original word, courage, 
uh, the character of Christianity worked out, and the reference, of course, goes to Christ, who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and many other ways to bring in this, the uh, beast of the first seal, God's power, in the four Gospels, in the four Gospels producing a book of Acts, which is the Acts of the Holy Spirit in disciples, not just 12 apostles, uh, not just 24 elders, but in uh, all of uh, his children, the power of God, all predestinated children. All right, well, it's the second seal, then the second church age. And now this religious war, the Antichrist spirit has gained power by politically gaining the upper hand, and he can put people to death. So it's an Antichrist spirit working. When he'd opened the second uh, seal, I heard uh, the second beast saying, come and see. Ox, what does an ox stand for? Calf, labor and sacrifice. As you read the second church age, Smyrna, the Smyrnaean age, you find out that they were to labor and to sacrifice, and it would be a time of uh, tribulation indeed. All right, as we go on, when he had opened the second seal. And now the next verse says, And there went out uh, another horse. The power now for that spirit of Antichrist is not just false righteousness, although he uses all of that. Uh, it's the color of the horse is very significant. Amen. And there went out another horse. Amen. Uh, it was red, and power was given to him that he should, uh, power was given to him that sat there on to take peace, take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. Amen. That's exactly what happened as you know, church history and so on, and as you see further, re further revelation in the uh, second church age, Revelation chapter 2. All right, amen. And there was given unto him a great sword, and it's a bloody sword, and many were killed, and many martyrs of Jesus Christ. Uh, and the, as the age is moving on, it's still early, but it's uh, uh, some time... Uh, has passed since the Apostle Paul, who was a messenger of the first church age, that had his ministry and went on and sealed his life, uh, sealed his testimony by giving up his own life, being martyred for Christ. Well, let's think about this now. Until Jesus comes, what should we do? We ought to pray for sure. We ought to read the Word. We ought to hear the right Word of the Lord. Until Jesus comes, time of the second seal, well, the second seal time is over. Now we're down in to the ending of the sixth seal. The seventh seal is his coming. Many things to learn about it. Well, now, things in prophecy, brother and sister, we should stay with them until... Uh, things in prophecy concerning Jesus Christ, that is, on to his second coming. Amen. Uh, for we know he's coming, he's coming in great power, he's coming again. So the things in prophecy on to Jesus' coming, Jesus tells in Matthew 24, for the disciples said, What shall be the sign of thy coming? And Jesus named a list of things. There'll be wars, rumors of wars. False Christ shall arise. Take heed that no man deceive you. All of the signs of prophecy foretold. So he gives them signs to look for concerning his coming. And uh, uh, these signs are mighty and strong. And when you see them coming, and you see that these things are fulfilled just the way Christ said. Well, take a look at Matthew 24 and verse 3. Until Jesus comes, what should they do? And he gives them instruction on what to do and to prepare. So we said quite a bit about the second seal early on, and so we go on and just get some background and see how the Spirit of God leads, because we have very little time to do it, so we just have to do it in this manner. All right, we're talking about St. Matthew's Gospel and picking up a verse in Matthew 
chapter 24. Three chapters of the, uh, in the gospel, uh, Matthew 24, Luke 21, St. Mark 13, tell us about the end time, how things are going to unfold in prophecy and power according to our Lord Jesus. Matthew 24, 3. And uh, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, overlooking Jerusalem and the temple that was standing at that time, very good view from the Mount of Olives over to the temple ground. The disciples came on to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Well, Jesus goes into it, so you want to watch what he taught about it. Wars, rumors of wars. There's going to be famines. There's going to be earthquakes. And he goes through all of the signs. Some of them we've heard much about and are familiar with indeed. All right. So at the end of the world, what's going to take place? Well, for the elect of God, both Gentile and Jew, there's to be a restoration of the nation Israel, physical first, and that happened in 1948. Israel, after 2,000 years of not being a nation, became a young nation again, the fig tree. Uh, its roots are deep, its branches tender, it put forth leaves. And now here we are down to, uh, in the common era, the year 2001. So 1948, Israel state. But the spiritual in Israel, the final remnant of them, haven't been born in a day, but they will be. As Moses and Elijah return and uh, bring forth uh, the plagues of the book of Revelation, the trumpets will sound. When a trumpet sounds, a plague follows. Trumpets will sound, the vials of wrath will be poured out, seven trumpets, seven vials, and three great woes. Calamity is moving swift, and when the woes are completed, there'll be nothing left uh, but ashes of the wicked to walk out on. So, brother and sister, the last sweeping prophecy it's on the slate, God's slate. It's scheduled. It's going to happen. And the word will be in power. Hallelujah. Matthew 24, if we would read the 14th verse, says, this is one of the signs in this gospel of the kingdom. Now, the kingdom has to do, the kingdom affects those that have eternal life. The only way you get into the kingdom of God is if you have eternal life. The kingdom is not in word only, the book of Corinthians tells us. 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. The kingdom is not in word only, not just words, but power. That means there'll be a demonstration of the power. And that'll be the proper way to identify where the truth of God is. It won't just be organizational churches that have no power over devils. But it will definitely be signs, wonders, and power. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Then shall the end come after the gospel of the kingdom is preached. The kingdom will not be preached till the, the people are restored to the powers of the kingdom, till they get back to the original word, which is in the symbol of the first seal under the lion. When the first seal opened, there's a lion roareth. First beast, the lion, said, come and see. And uh, as we reiterated on how that seal opened up, first seal, and now things about the second. All right, then shall the end come. The end will come uh, with the word in power, 1 Corinthians 4, 20. Amen. The word made manifest. For St. Paul said, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, when he came, this is the original word, it was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but it was in demonstration and power. Why wasn't it in, with enticing words of man's wisdom? Well, it's very simple. Matthew 11 says, God has hid it from the intellectuals and the theologians, from the wise and the prudent, and has revealed it on to babes. Matthew chapter 11. So there has to be a demonstration of a, the power. Amen. So signs of his coming. What shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? The seals reveal it. The seals uh, 
prove to us many things uh, and give us in-depth things that happened in the church age. And now, God's way to reveal anything in the book of Revelation, according to Matthew 11, will never come by intellectuals, will never come by theologians. But according to the Word of God, Amos 3, 7, it'll come to prophets. Also, Revelation 10, 7, when the... In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he begins to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he has declared on his servants the prophets. So we get down the time of the seventh age, which winds up in the seventh seal of his coming. There's no more ages to come after the seventh age, and we're in the seventh age, but there is something to come at the end of the seventh age, which is called in the Bible harvest, Matthew 13, 30. Wheat and tares, good and evil, are intertwined until the time of harvest, brother and sister. We're called back to the gospel of the kingdom where the word is in power, where the doctrine's pure, amen, and where the saint's faith comes under an anointing, uh, lifting their faith or raising the faith of the saints to receive uh, the promises that are given in the Bible. Demonstrations, again, which Paul said. He did not come with uh, enticing words of man's wisdom, 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, but in demonstration and power of the Spirit. The Spirit of God now brings us into the power of God. What is the power of God? Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost in power. He went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The healing signs, the wonders that accompany Christ in the true revival and uh, put the proof to the restoration time. There must be signs and wonders because, you see, Christ himself was approved among all the holy brethren by mighty signs and wonders. Acts chapter 2. Peter said, you've crucified the one who is uh, approved of God among you by mighty signs and wonders, which he did in the midst of all of you. So, brother and sister, the signs and the wonders, the healing and the power of God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then his power is the same today as it was yesterday. Amen. But you see, you have to have faith to let the power loose. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Well, we think we're hearing it, we're reading it. You have to hear the message for the hour puts you in the power. But it only works on those that have ears to hear it. For John 8 said that not all hear. Jesus said, why can you not hear my speech? He actually says in John 8, 45, 6, 7, those verses, he that is of God heareth God's words. You can't hear them because some of them are of the devil. Some of them are tares and not wheat. They can't hear. Harvest time and the separation's on. Uh, the intertwining of the evil and the good, uh, that's over. Tares are bound together to be burned in the tribulation fires. The wheat to be gathered into God's barn. God made choice to save the elect. He's the justifier, the sanctifier. As many as are predestinated in him, he, he's called and sanctified, uh, amen, and set aside for his purpose indeed. Uh, glory to God. And they are the ones that will be glorified or have a body like uh, unto his glorious resurrected body. And the uh, physical makeup and so forth, uh, the vile body of the flesh will give way the mortal to immortality in Christ. As the saints have gone on, all that are in the grave shall hear the voice of the Son of God. Those that are in Christ face no judgment other than the judgment seat of Christ, which gives reward for their service in uh, their service on to the Christ and their witness on to the world. But the books will be opened and uh, all drunkards, whoremongers, all idolaters and so forth will be judged. 
So, brother and sister, even some on the book of life, as you remember Luke 10, Judas had his name on the book of life, but it still wasn't enough. It was rubbed down. But those in the record of life within the book of life will not be blotted out because they are predestinated souls. Their nature was formed in the infinite sphere. They never had a time that they were not because they were always in God's thoughts. And God doesn't get new thoughts. God always knew them. There was no time that they were not in his mind, but they were not born on the earth. They were just predestinated as seed. But once born on the earth in a physical body, then the gospel of the kingdom comes to them. Then the fullness of this creative power, glory to God, comes forth. See, we're saved by creative power. Jesus created the blood cells of the Christ child. Amen? Christ had no father, no mother, no beginning of days, but he had a, a mother to the sense of incubation, holding in the inner womb the Christ. But all to do with his blood cells was a creative work. Glory to God, the great creator. He became our Savior. He prepared a body to redeem us, be a near kinsman redeemer in that body and bring us back to God, all right? Well, now, hallelujah, signs and wonders, uh, they attest whether that's uh, the message uh, has truly come. Now, here's an illustration you might take on signs and wonders. Remember Moses? God gave him a staff and said, go down, cast it down before Pharaoh or whatever. And uh, Moses cast it down before the Lord. It became a snake. He went to Pharaoh's court and cast it down under God's commission, under God's anointing, and it was a wonderful gift. But the Pharaoh said, well, maybe this is a cheap uh, trick of a magician. And his uh, staff, so to speak, over here, we won't say staff again, get mixed up, <laughs> his uh, uh, core of witches and wizards around uh, Pharaoh's throne threw their staff down. They became snakes also. Showing us what? Showing us whenever God gives a gift, no matter how powerful that gift, the devil tries to impersonate it. He, he always works impersonations. But notice Moses' staff became a snake, swallowed those theirs up. It all stops with the Almighty, doesn't it? No matter how many snakes they had withering around there, none of their snakes could devour the one Moses threw down. But what Moses threw down devoured them. Showing what? They can't keep up. They think they can keep up. They can't keep up. And the calling of the remnant is set, said brother and sister. Signs and wonders will be found. They'll be found no other place but in this body of redeemed who are restored to the word of God who now go into a demonstration of the power. Amen. Because they are restored uh, and because uh, time is long spent in the sixth seal and uh, its effect, which uh, we're just the second seal tonight, but uh, all that's to happen concerning his coming, the seventh seal, in the seven thunders and so forth, uh, that'll unfold right near his coming. Remember what Christ is doing. He's building a church without spot or blemish. Amen. Ephesians 5, 27 and so on. All right. So glory to God. Signs and wonders in the Gentile elect group and be found no place else. There'll be impersonations in that, but they'll be swallowed. They won't be able to keep up. So glory to God. That means God will truly have to be among them. And you know, that's what he said. Where two or three of the elect are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. Now, actually, we'll not only be able to sing, uh, we have the power, we'll be able to sing, we have the faith to trigger the power. <laughs> glory to God. Uh, faith comes out by hearing, but faith is what? It's a gift of God. It's a victory. Substance of things hoped for and evidence, in, evidence of things not seen. Ephesians 2 says, we're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves. it's a gift of God. That faith is a gift of God. So he's gifting us with faith, amen. Signs and wonders will come about, the word and power. Those that have eternal life will go into the kingdom. And the kingdom is not just word, but power. And this is the power of the infinite, the almighty, 
has no beginning. Eternal life has no death in it, brother and sister. That's why you know hell's not going to be eternal because hell has an end. If you're going to burn eternally, you'd have to have eternal life to get there, and anyone that has eternal life is going a long ways from hell, as far as you could get. So I uh, glory to God Almighty now. After the manner of our Lord, Acts 2, 22, signs and wonders. Well, amen. Well, when then, preacher, will Christ come? When will he come? Well, the Bible doesn't give us to guess about that. It tells when he'll come. Not the day nor the hour. But at the same, by the same token, we're to know the seasons and times. Oh, yes. So the prophets have spoken that. You don't know the day nor the hour, but you're not ignorant of the seasons and the times, brethren. When will Jesus come? After all elect are sealed in. The body of Christ is both Jew and Gentile. All Jews will be sealed. End time Jews. This is an end time message, so you go to the end time Jews, Revelation 7. Out of all the tribes, sealed 12,000 in 144,000. The remnant ember, number of Gentiles, uh, uh, though not spoken of often, but you see in the records of life, there's a Gentile group, according to Revelation 5, 9 and Revelation 14, who stand on Mount Zion. They are also sealed. So when all elect Jews, Revelation, we're talking about when Jesus comes back, puts his feet on the Mount of Olives, the topography has changed. Oh, the whole of uh, that area on this globe uh, is completely changed, brother and sister. Amen. He'll come after the two witnesses of Revelation 11 have done, uh, have completed their 42 months of prophecy. Jesus will come, chapter 19 of the book of Revelation, fighting with the sword of his mouth, he doesn't write out with no name. He has a name written, the Word of God, and King of kings and Lord of lords. He's not a spirit, but it's God that is spirit, but it's God in a glorified body, amen, who has wounds and so forth that are recognized as wounds by Jewish brethren. Where'd you get these wounds? In the house of my friends. So, uh, amen. Through what happened to Jesus, mercy was extended to us Gentiles, Blindness went on the Jews, uh, but an elect number of Jews, Romans chapter 11, will also be sealed. All right. Sealed. So after the, the last Jew, elect Jewish person, the last elect Gentile are sealed, Jesus is going to come. The Lord Jesus will come. The sealing, remember, is in Ezekiel 9. The good mark that they're ready for the sealing is that they sigh and cry for the abomination that's in the land. The others uh, that are not sealed, uh, and they're sealed, remember, by the Holy Spirit of promise, Ephesians 4.30, slaughtering weapon comes upon them. But no slaughter or, or tribulation destruction comes upon those that have the mark, Ezekiel 9.4, that are sealed in. So there, there's one body of Christ, but it's made up of both Jew and Gentile. And God deals with the Jews uh, because of their positioning in the earth. Uh, and through their blindness, our eyes were open. And through their trials and tribulations, the blessing of God, uh, we've learned many things from them. And even though they became stiff-necked, rebellious, and blinded, uh, the elect of them, uh, when they hear uh, the witness of the prophets... They'll finally receive their Messiah. There's always been a few Jewish Christians, but very few in number, and uh, it's a very small nation. There's not many, 13 million in all of the world now, very small. So, brother, and half of those are in the United States. And um, four million or so gathered in Israel, and the rest scattered throughout uh, the world. Well, after the sealing now, then Jesus comes. Jesus comes. What's the manner of his coming? Well, we'll take time to look at that. Turn to 1 Thessalonians 4. Amen. Uh, Jesus comes after all elect are sealed. The elect are the, uh, the 
body of Christ, those that are in Christ, Ephesians 5:27. God deals with the Hebrew elect in their nation. He deals, of course, Gentiles are a people taken uh, from among the nations. Turn, if you will, Thessalonians, and the chapter is for First Thessalonians. Hallelujah. And we see the manner of Jesus coming after all the elect, both Jew and Gentile, are sealed in. So you can see in all of this, brother and sister, you'd have to preach for a week about the, you could preach easily a couple weeks on the second seal and these things we're doing tonight. We just don't have the time. We don't need to go that long. We, just to get the real punch of what's going on here. Not second Thessalonians, but first. All right. And we start here about the 15th verse, and let us read on. Glory to God. God is our helper. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Nothing can shake that, brother and sister. It's thus saith the Lord. It'll happen just this way. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or get in the way of them which are asleep, whose bodies... They're alive, but their bodies are sleeping in the dust of the earth. For the Lord himself, not three persons, but one God, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel, amen, and with uh, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now watch this. Here's the translation. Like Enoch was translated, he had a testimony, please God, then we which are alive and remain on his coming sake, those that are living on the earth, the Gentiles, remain shall be caught up together with them, saints of all ages that have uh, died as martyrs, their body placed in the dust of the earth, will come with them in uh, the clouds, to me caught up together to meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, my. This is a wedding supper of the Lamb. This is blessed and the holy of the first resurrection. Just before he puts his feet on this earth. What's taking place? In the air, in the, uh, this realm of the heavenly. A wedding supper is taking place. The Lamb shall take his bride. Both Jew and Gentile. Things are complete. Then he comes. Glory to God. And he comes with clouds of glory, and every eye shall see him. All right, well now, Jesus comes. That's the manner. When will he come? After all elect are sealed in. Praise God. Then his uh, feet will touch down on the Mount of Olives. He'll come uh, with ten thousands, or all of his saints from all ages, all elect who are to rule with him for one thousand years on the earth. So the second seal, brother and sister, Goes over into the second age, Revelation 2, 8 to 10. Glory to God. In this age, uh, that uh, great sword, that red color of the horse, the Antichrist gained political power, and anyone that disagrees, uh, what would they disagree with? The false doctrine is teaching. 1 Timothy 4, the Spirit now speaketh expressly, some should give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Remember the first seal and first age, it was the deeds of the Nicolaitans that became a doctrine, and that doctrine is Antichrist. And now in the second seal, those who will not accept the doctrine of Antichrist, false teaching of the apostate workers of iniquity can be put to death by the sword, and so they are. As you can study it in Revelation chapter 2, all right, now the second seal, a religious war. My, oh, my. How do we know it's a religious war? Matthew 24, we're reading, Jesus said so. Amos 3, how do we know it's a religious war? It's revealed unto his servants, the prophets. This is the way Prophet Branham preached it, and it was given to him. Since he's the angel or messenger of Revelation 10, 7 and Revelation 3, 14. Glory to God, die. We know by revelation of the word, vindicated the prophet sent. We know because of the lateness of the hour. We know because of Joel's prophecy. There's many ways to know it. We know it by the message to our age, brother and sister. So glory to God now. The message. 
What was the message? That our hearts would be turned back. Malachi 4, back to the faith of the ancient fathers, the way it was in the beginning. Well, what is the message? Joel 2, I shall restore. All that the locusts have devoured, false churches have devoured. Whatever Catholicism didn't devour, Protestantism did devour, then uh, Pentecostalism. But the Lutherans left, the Methodists stayed up, and so on it, it goes, you see, and there's nothing left except just a very, just like a snag in the earth. But God said, oh, no. What I planted, I'm not going to plant a new one. I'll restore this one. It'll be a great miracle among the people. Glory to God Almighty. No matter what Antichrist uh, has uh, perpetrated, uh, it will not be sufficient to put down what God have, will, uh, has wrought. So the message, it's, it's a great message. Amen. Note this, the message is greater than the messenger. Thus, we must keep our eyes uh, on the message. It's all right to give due credit and reverence to the messenger, but it's the message that has the importance. The message is important, therefore we lift up the, uh, our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. They were looking to Moses, the messenger, but they didn't really get the message of Moses when Jesus walked this earth. History repeats itself and sure has in this time. They're looking at the messenger, Brother Brand, forgetting what the message was. But we're looking on to Jesus, the Bible says, as author and finisher of our faith. It's a message. It's a restoration message, and it's gaining the power, and it's on to the glory of God. Amen. And it'll produce signs and wonders in it. Amen. And those with eternal life will go into this kingdom. Glory to God. Uh, into the economy, the government, the, the dynamics of Almighty God. Intellectuals are going to break away, brother and sister, and uh, the supernatural is going to come in. Remember now, the intellectual, it's not given to him, Matthew 11. Nor is it given to the theologian, it's given to prophets. God reveals his secrets on his servants, the prophets. All right, now, the second seal. The second beast, opening of the seal. The spirit that goes out, he's riding. Where, where's he going? What's he's go? Well, he's riding out to be enthroned, then crowned, then worshipped. And that spirit will finally, it's the Antichrist spirit, will be incarnate in a man whose number is 666. He'll be the beast or the Antichrist spoken of by John and First John, and uh, also by John the Revelator in Book of Revelation. So that's why this ride is on. And while he's on this ride, he tried to bluff. He was unsuccessful in bluffing the saints, but he was uh, able to plant the deeds of the Nicolaitans among them. Revelation 2, 6, which God hates, but by the second seal, gaining political power, now he can actually put to death those that disagree with him. So if you know, uh, have ever read Religious Reformation over the Inquisition time, you know that's exactly so. So, brother and sister, amen. Much is given to us of the, uh, on uh, the subject in the word of the Lord. God wants us to be aware. He's put it in symbols uh, to stir our hearts, amen, to make us conscious of his presence and of his doing and of his ways. This is the way he's chosen to do it, and it has a purpose. It will be among the elect, amen, and be preached by prophets and produce the power that's necessary for the day that we live in. So glory to God. They can talk about a messenger all day long. You see, the devil don't care about that as long as you don't really get the message. So glory to God, but if you get the message, you're certainly going to appreciate the messenger. Everything's taken care of. But you just turn around a little bit, and you're off somewhere into, you know, some big strife about communion wine or something with God Almighty. Who knows? And all other legalistic facets and everything that the devil uh, can hook to you. Uh, and uh, he has many tricks. It's a supernatural world there. It's another world of... And remember, no matter what kind of a gift it is, the devil will make an impersonation of it. 
But when you get down to the time of Moses, they were going to come out. The impersonations were not sufficient to stop the Hebrew children from coming out. And the impersonations are not sufficient now to stop the elect from going in. Going into the restoration of Joel, going into the power. Let's stand and pray our time. So. Praise God Almighty. All right. A few things about the second seal and prophecy. Brothers and sisters, come. We think on these things tonight. Hallelujah. Only God can reveal it to you unless God draws you and speaks to you. You can't get it. There's no way you can except God gives it to you. If God gives it to you, you get it right. If you're elect, remember, he said, my sheep know my voice. They get to thinking some other way than that that God has provided. If they walk that, God can't bless them. He, he can only bless you when you come the provided way. He can only bless you when you show obedience because the Spirit's given those that obey. You can't uh, get a bit of it down in order to experience the dynamic except you're elect. Mental concepts of it are insufficient. You must work through your whole of your being, the total person. You see, spiritually minded can bring life and peace, brother and sister. If you're really spiritual minded, it will also uh, bring you right into the dynamic power. But a carnal mind, carnal concepts of it, just the intellectual and mental, that's theology. That's things uh, that will feign the power. That's things that are going to run out of gas, so to speak. Will not be uh, have enough of the fiery fuel to take them through. But praise God now. God leads his own. Amen. If he told us something's going to happen, then he'll make a way for it to happen. And therefore, he has a people that will be in that happening, in that great, the great events of prophecy in the end time. Heavenly Father, Holy Father, we pray for each and every one now. Lord God, that, that truly our cup will run over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. We'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We thank you. You forgive all our iniquities. You heal all our diseases. You redeem our life from destruction. We thank you that you're present. We pray, oh, Father God, now for that spirit of prophecy to have its way with each and every one. And stretch forth your hand, oh, Father, holy and blessed to do signs and wonders. In the name of the holy child, Jesus, glory to God. Uh, as we go to prayer and we realize the threatenings, the scoffing, uh, and all of the intellectual uh, uh, words against the right way, Father God, uh, how we thank you. This way is sure. Your word is sure. We have this more sure word of prophecy. Help us now, Lord God, to walk in it. Walk in the light just as you're in the light and to bear one of those bur burdens. We ask it all now. Unto thy glory, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen, amen. Let's sing Amazing Grace. You're going to pray with us? Let's gather around the altar. Let's pray and pray one for another. If you need to be healed tonight, need to receive the Holy Ghost tonight, need to be saved, it's God's choice to save you. If you can receive his word and receive those that he sends and do it his way, that blessing will be upon you. Amen. Amazing grace.